Hello, and welcome back to LearnSBOM.com. My name is Skylar, and today we're going to be talking about KIX. KIX stands for Keeping Infrastructure as Code Secure. It is open source and compatible with a bunch of different cloud-based infrastructure. KIX is mainly a vulnerability scanner, but it also checks for compliance issues and infrastructure misconfigurations. KIX is compatible with Docker, AWS CloudFormation, Ansible, and more. You can find the full list on their website linked in the description. You can install KIX in a couple of different ways, through Docker, UBI-based images, source code, and Homebrew. Homebrew is deprecated, so I'm not going to show you that. So we're just going to do Docker and source code installations today. Moving over to the terminal now, Docker is pretty simple. You're just going to do docker pull check marks slash kicks colon latest. This is going to pull the latest Docker image. And once that's done, we can actually run the image. So docker run dash T dash V so we can mount a volume. And then we're going to do the path to the volume that we're going to want to mount. So that's home student desktop. And then I had just have a downloaded project called Ansible examples. And then we're going to be mounting that to just slash path that can technically just be any directory but it will have to be consistent with the other slash paths we're adding in this command. So then you're going to call the check marks image. So check marks kicks. We're going to specify the path with dash P and this is just going to be path. And then for the output, we're just going to do slash path again, and this will output it. Sorry, dash O for output. And that's going to output it back to the path, which is going to end up in our Ansible examples folder. So when we run this, it will write. So obviously in the base command, you can see that they have a couple of different options. So generate ID, help, list platforms, remediate, scan, and versions. Since we're working on the vulnerability scanner part, we just have to specify scan. And now the dash P and dash O flag should work and we should see the kicks logo. Once it finishes running, we can see a pretty basic summary here outlining how many vulnerabilities were found for each category, high, medium, low, and info. And scrolling up, we get a bit more information, starting with low and going on to medium and high. The outputted file, the results.json, is slightly different. It starts with high-based vulnerability info, and then at the end ends with info-based. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's move on to the source code installation. First, you're going to need to go to their GitHub and copy this link here to be able to clone the GitHub. It is just checkmark slash kicks. Heading back over to the terminal, we just do git clone and then paste that link. I already have it installed. So if we CD into kicks, you can see that this is what the repository should look like. You will need to install this with Go. So if you don't have Go installed, you can either go to Go's website and download it from there. Or if you're running Linux, you can probably install it through the terminal itself. So in order to build, we're going to need to do Go mod vendor. This should install a couple of things. You might need to do this as admin or sudo. And then after that, we're going to do go build dash O for the output file. I'm just going to put it in the bin file that I'm creating and I'm going to name it kicks. After that, we're going to do the actual file that we're trying to make, which is dot slash CMD slash console slash main dot go. We should now see in bin that there is a kicks executable, which means you've done it correctly. And now we can actually just run this. So if we do dot slash bin slash kicks dash H, we should get the help command with a couple of different available commands that they have. We're just gonna be focusing on scan because that is the main pur purpose of this tool. It does have remediate, which auto remediates the project. If there are known fixes that are pretty easy, this should be able to fix it for you, which is always helpful. It does have a couple of other flags, silent and verbose are always helpful, and then a couple of log based stuff and obviously dash H. So if we now do scan dash H, we get many more options. Again, it's just kick scan flags, and obviously you'll need to include the path. Some interesting ones to look at is dash dash bomb, which includes the bill of materials and the results output. Further down, we need the path. That's kind of obvious, but we can also choose choose what format we want it in and they have a bunch of different formats you can choose all if you want all of these but they have cyclone dx csv html json and a bunch of others and then down here with global flags as we saw earlier there's silent and verbose and then a couple of other logging options so i'm going to scan the same project as i did with the docker file so we're going to do slash bin kicks scan and then i'm going to do dash p to specify the path 
It's in the desktop directory, so I go back one and then Ansible examples. Then I'm gonna do dash dash report format. This is really anything you want it to be. So I'm just gonna make it all and then dash V for verbose. It'll give us a little bit more output than what we saw in the Docker example. And then dash O, we're gonna just do the current directory slash results. Once we've done that, I'm also gonna specify dash dash bomb. This should make a bill of materials in the result output. So if we hit enter, it breaks immediately because of course it does. So as you can see, that kind of broke it. That's because I didn't make report format plural. And now that we run it, we get a couple of more info because of the verbose option. We see the Kix logo, which means it's working and currently it is scanning. Switching over to how Kix queries for vulnerabilities for a second. We can see on their website, their vulnerability database that they query. And over on the left hand side here are all the supported platforms. If let's say we click on Dockerfile, this is all the vulnerabilities that Kix knows of for Docker files themselves. This also means Kix doesn't stand for code-based vulnerabilities like deprecated functions or anything like that, which means you'll have to have a separate vulnerability scanner for stuff like that. Switching back over to the terminal to talk about the dash dash bomb option. In this directory, I have two results files, one with and one without the dash bomb option, and I'm gonna compare them with cyclindx CLI. So if we do cyclindx Linux, diff, and one of the bill of materials, and then the other, the component version options, this is going to find any differences between the two functions. So this didn't find anything. I'm not sure if that's because CycleIndex CLI only looks for the component version differences, and if there aren't any, it prints none, or if it pairs everything and the files are the exact same. If we run it without the component version, it doesn't output anything, which seems strange for a diff command. And thinking back to the previous video, Learn SBOM did about CycleIndex CLI, put it in the top right corner of this video as a little addition if you want to go check that out. I remember not including the component version, just didn't run the diff command. So I'm pretty confident it only checks to see if different components exist and if they have the same or different versions. That means that the bomb option doesn't change the component versions, which isn't too ridiculous. But if we look at the word count of each of these files, wc, and then let's do cdx, it has that many words, lines, files, whatever, and then we do the word count of the other one, we can see it has the exact same numbers, which is really strange if the dash dash bomb option adds anything at all. While it's still possible, I would edge my bets at saying the dash dash bomb option doesn't do anything too helpful. We can run the line by line diff command between the two and see that there are some differences, but I'm not sure if this is because the line difference is switched or something else has happened. So I think bomb option isn't really that helpful and you shouldn't rely on it, especially. The final topic I wanted to talk about is CI CD support. Kix has support for a bunch of different pipelines, including Azure, code build, Bitbucket, everything you can see here. But from what I can tell, the plugin varies depending on your pipeline. For example, if you're using Azure with Kix, it will fail a build whenever a vulnerability is found. But in Bitbucket, for example, it'll scan the code whenever it's pushed and it won't prevent the push from happening if it finds something vulnerable. So depending on what plugin you're using, Kix will vary in how it works. So be sure to read up on the documentation to see how it works for your application. In general, I think Kix is a pretty good vulnerability scanner for all the infrastructure it supports. As long as the vulnerability database is up to date, I don't really see anything wrong with using this tool. I wouldn't use it as an SBOM generator because it would only find infrastructure-based vulnerable components, but its job at finding those components seems to be good and I haven't seen many tools that scan for infrastructure-based vulnerabilities. It will be necessary to use this tool in addition to a code-based vulnerability scanner because this won't scan for deprecated functions or anything like that, but for its use case, Kix is pretty good and I would definitely recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you had any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.